I promised Michelle that I'd make smash burgers tonight for dinner, but she had also had a request of onions and mushrooms on the Blackstone. Oh, look. look fantastic. When do we eat? Cooking smash burgers in Otsego Lake, Michigan, the birthplace of the Manhattan Project and the development of the nuclear bomb. But how did we end up here at a campground that wasn't even on our itinerary? I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. In June 2023, we planned a trip from Michigan to South Dakota to change our domicile to South Dakota. We detailed this trip in our video series we call The Blessed Midwest. Leaving Port Huron, Michigan, we traveled across the state to Ludington to ride the SS Badger Ferry across Lake Michigan with our Airstream loaded onto this historic steamship. I could turn back now and leave this all Landing in Wisconsin, we towed Gemini to Laverne, Minnesota and stayed at a great Harvest Host Take 16 Brewing. From there, we made it to South Dakota and Custer State Park, only to realize we had forgotten our passports needed to establish domicile. I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. After an unscheduled extra four-day stay at Custer, we began our trek back to Michigan only after getting our new South Dakota driver's licenses. With that extra four-day stay in South Dakota, we were forced to cancel all of our reservations for the return trip. Don't forget me when I'm gone, cause right now I just got to be free. We were fortunate enough to find a great Harvest Host winery in Wisconsin and then book one of our favorite campgrounds in Michigan's stunning Upper Peninsula, Indian Lake State Park. We were able to celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary at Indian Lake, the same campground where we honeymooned in 30 years prior. Hunting for a campground halfway between Indian Lake and Port Huron, we were able to secure a reservation at Otsego Lake State Park. A place we had never visited. Luckily for us, before this trip, we had purchased a Michigan State Park Pass. I don't know where I've been. I don't know where I'm going. What we're going to do is we're going to install the 2023 Michigan State Park Pass. This is the non-resident permit that'll let us get into Michigan State Parks, and this becomes our day use fee. See, it's the recreation passport. You can see it right there. So we're gonna stick this right in the window. They want it right on the passenger side. And there we are. There's our 2023 Michigan State Park Pass that gives us access, free access into the Michigan State Parks. Now, that's not free camping at all. That's just access. So that's your day use permit. Camping then runs between $30 to $40 a night for camping at the Michigan State Parks. Normally, the cost is about $5 to $11 a day to enter the Michigan State Parks. But for $39, you can obtain this state park pass that gives you access to Michigan State Parks. You no longer have to pay that daily permit to get into Michigan State Parks, which are, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful state parks in the entire United States. Look at that. Airstreamer was here. Finish up this job and do it right. It's only a few things that a man like me needs. And Jesus whiskey and you're up next. 
to me singing hey honey i'm coming home i don't know why we've gone so long hey honey I'm coming home to you say hey honey promise please that you're gonna be the light on for me hey honey i'm coming home soon and know what we're gonna do Fantastic. When do we eat? A little bit. Put the piece off to the side. All right, so turn the griddle up a little bit. For your smash burgers. So we do, we gotta make sure we get the griddle good and hot. So I gotta turn up full right now. Be on the side. Michelle made the two inch Balls of burger right here, standard hamburger. Get the griddle hot. I was using butter to saute the onions and mushrooms, and that'll work really good for a base for the smash burgers too. So I've got my press, my cast iron press right here, and then the parchment rounds too that are gonna be used for this. This is getting pretty good and hot right now, and so we have to make sure we're hot enough for those burgers for the Maillard reaction on this because that's what makes them so yummy. Otherwise, if you smash burgers and you don't have the griddle hot enough, you just push all the grease out of them and all the moisture out, and you just have dry, tough burgers. What we want is something really juicy and tasty. That's what we're after here. So we get this just about smoking hot. Drop, let's see if we're hot enough. Drop a couple of these on there. This is the one. And just so you know, there's nine. Nine what? <laughs> All right, so this is good and hot, it's smoking away and everything. So we use our parchment paper. We're going to lay it on there right like this. And then we're going to push this down. Just like that, rotate it a little bit, just like that. Bring it flat. Let's do the next one. What you're after is a good flat. And then you want to end up so that these have some lacing. And you can see right in here how we got the little holes right in there, right in there. And that's where it's going to fry. That's where the magic's going to happen. I didn't push this one out here quite far enough. Let's see. Yeah, you got to make sure you get that up. Add our cheese, American cheese does really good with that. I'm gonna drop the lid down to kind of contain that heat and melt that cheese just a little bit more. It's smelling really good. Do you need a plate to put them on? I'm gonna set them over here. Okay. Keep using the same parchment paper. We don't have to change that out. That's hot. Don't burn yourself. All right, let's get some salt on these. Brown them. Look at that. Nice. So now what is this um, that you're using to make these? This is our Blackstone 17 inch griddle. And this is the one that I've converted to run off of the propane of the Airstream trailer so that I don't have to have little one pound bottles. This works really, really well. Let's get these guys set aside. Yeah, that lacing right there. That's what we're after. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you know what we're gonna do. You're all sunny in the face. <laughs> there must be a sunset happening. 
With the sun setting on our day, it is time to reflect on how Otsego Lake is the surprisingly significant location in the development of the nuclear bomb. It was 1942. World War II was raging in Europe and in the Pacific. Both the United States and Germany were in a race to develop a nuclear weapon. In July 1942, J. Robert Oppenheimer met with Dr. Arthur Compton right here at Otsego Lake State Park. Earlier that year, Compton had put Oppenheimer in charge of the development of an atomic weapon. That research would be called by the code name, the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer traveled by train to northern Michigan and was met by Dr. Compton. They then traveled north by auto to Otsego Lake State Park, where they could discuss the nuclear project in complete secrecy. A nuclear explosion was still only a theory, and the scientists debated the possibility that the nuclear chain reaction could not be contained and might ignite the atmosphere and destroy the entire Earth in one massive fiery inferno. 20 years prior, Dr. Compton had won the Nobel Prize for Physics by detailing what became known as the Compton Effect. It was this earlier work that eventually convinced the majority of the Manhattan Project that a nuclear explosion would be contained and not ignite the entire atmosphere. The blessed midwife. The blessed midwife.